Hi, I'm Roxanne. And I'm Sierra. And welcome to An, An Overnight Olympic Success. Success. Today we're at the All Olympia Gymnastics Center. And we'll be interviewing Olympic hopeful Maddie Larson. Maddie Larson is an elite American gymnast. She is a member of the U.S. national team and is the 2010 national champion on floor exercise. Additionally, she was the 2005 Level 10 state, regional, and national champion. Larson came back strong in 2010 from injuries to win the all-around title at the Cover Girl Classic in July. A month later, she won three medals at the 2010 U.S. National Championships, gold on floor, silver in the all-around, and bronze on uneven bars. Now let's introduce you to Maddie Larson. All right, Maddie, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. When did you start? you know, doing gymnastics? Um, I started when I was about two years old and I took like little baby classes. I wanted to follow my sister in the gym because I wasn't really supposed to do gymnastics. It was her time. <laughs> but I wanted to copy everything she did so I used to like follow her in my diapers and <laughs> I eventually uh, convinced my parents to let me take classes. Wow, that's so awesome because I know Sierra and I, like, we always are trying to like copy each other. So that's so yeah. cool that you had that, uh, that dynamic with your sister. So what do you think that does it take to like become a top athlete or top gymnast? A lot of training. I think gymnastics you train probably more than any other sport. An elite gymnast usually trains between six to seven hours a day, five, six days a week. So, I mean, it's really time consuming, but you have to know it's only a little part of your life. I mean, most gymnasts stop when they're in their early 20s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, if you just put everything into that, then you know, you'll be good. Do you think it's important to just tell yourself, you know, I'm just focusing on this right now, I'm trying to become a better person and do what I need to do and just focus on that, does that help you? It is, um, that helps because like, I mean, throughout high school, that's kind of when you're peaking in your gymnastics mm -hmm. years, but there's so many distractions. Yeah. So you have to realize that, I mean, I guess you can sacrifice going to some parties or like going to France, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I know that athletes, when, when they train and compete, they can sometimes get tired, you know, and have days where they seriously, they just want to stop or they want to take a break. How did you get through those, those periods and actually get to the next level and, and motivate yourself? The national team for gymnastics, we actually have this term called day three, and we always know that day three at a venue that's like somewhere else in the world is usually the hardest day. So we go in, it, we go in like expecting that that day is going to be a little off so that when it comes we're not too like flustered or we're not like so surprised. What is it because it's you're in, in the middle of it and so you're tired? Is that the reason yeah, why? Yeah, it's because after like a couple days of hard training, I don't know why, it's just day three <laughs> just always gets you hard. So, I mean, we're prepared for it. I mean, that's really good advice for anyone who's like yeah. younger too, because if you don't have someone to tell you that, then how, you're like, don't yeah. understand you why. Go, like having an amazing like first couple of days, you're like, oh wow, this is great. But then day three will come and you'll kind of freak out, but just don't freak out. <laughs> We've had to do like special things where you to get your mind, and I know this is totally mind body experience. Do you do anything outside that you could, you know, give advice to people about how to kind of keep yourself calm? I do a lot of visualization. Yeah. Um, kind of seeing the routine the way you want it to go. I know some athletes, when they try to visualize, sometimes they'll see themselves making mistakes and stuff. And the more you practice, the more you'll see yourself doing successful routines. And I think after you do that, then it'll help you do successful routines up on the equipment. No, I think that gymnastics is honestly one of the first like X Games sports because you guys are doing so many amazing <laughs> tricks and yeah. stunts. When you actually you fall off, how do you overcome getting back up on the apparatus and moving forward and continuing the routine or even, you know, mid-routine, uh, focusing on what you have to do? Yeah, well, um, I mean, you fall so much in gymnastics. I don't even remember the first time I, I fell, but um, you get so used to it that it just becomes automatic to seriously just jump back up right away and start. We did acting when we were younger, and that's something we had to learn. You, If you screw up, even if it's you forget a line, yeah. you have to make up a line and yeah, get back out there. Exactly. I've... Um, I've kind of made up a routine, especially on floor. I remember when I was younger, I'd forget my routine, and I'd kind of like midway, just instead of freezing, just I was I start making something up. And I remember one time I got a really high score doing that. My coach was like proud of me. So what advice would you give kids who uh, would like to be on a national team or a Division One team? Um, I definitely say give a hundred percent because it really goes by faster than you think. And I know that it seems like you're missing out on stuff and 
you're kind of not sure if it's what you want to do, but you need to be 100% if you want to be an elite gymnast because if you're not sure, it's not going to happen and you're going to feel like you put in the work but nothing paid off. So give 100%, it'll be over before you know it and you'll be so happy with what you're doing. What would it mean for you to compete in the Olympics? It would just mean that all my work paid off and all the hours in the gym and everything I've gone through and uh, it would just be the best feeling I think I've ever felt just to be at the Olympics. So something that we do on every episode of each show is we ask you five questions. It's called the high five. Okay. So we want to ask you five questions and you say the first thing that comes to your head. Okay. <laughs> if you could live in any decade or century, which would it be? Uh, the 50s. Okay. Um, what kind of car do you drive? Uh, my mom's car, because I don't have one yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and then uh, Mac or PC? Mac. Mac. <laughs> Alright, um, if life is just a box of chocolates, what kind of chocolate would you eat? Um, a chocolate with little pieces of toffee in it, maybe some almonds. <laughs> What's one quality you need in order to have success? Um, humor. So on the end of every episode, we try and see if we can become an overnight success in whatever field our, our interviewee is pursuing. Uh, can you help us become an overnight success? In Definitely. The Definitely. <laughs> <laughs>